again. I'm Kathleen Harshberger. We are now on week three of Mary Draper Ingalls' story. We left Mary last week listening to the ominous sounds of the Shawnee war drums. Mary is horrified to learn that she and others are going to Big Bone Lick, Kentucky to make salt for Pierre Laval. This cunning man is planning to give the Indians guns in return for the salt Mary and Mrs. Bingaman will make. The Shawnee, in turn, plan to get, use the guns for an attack on the settlers in the New River Valley, Mary's family, her friends, her home. So, again, the heartbroken Mary is forced to march further west, further away from her family, along with Mrs. Bingaman, to Big Bone Lick, Kentucky. The salt licks of Kentucky are scary, creepy places. All around are piles of bones and mastodon skeletons. These are the remains of prehistoric beasts who had come to the swamps for the salt and then had been trapped and the salt preserved their bones and their white, ghostly presence. Making salt is hot, back-breaking work. Huge kettles of boiling salt water have to be stirred continually until nothing is left but dried salt. Mary grows weaker and weaker, and she realizes that if she doesn't leave soon, she will not have the strength to make the journey back home. The problem was that she and Mrs. Bingaman were watched all the time. This is where Pierre Laval redeems himself. Laval realizes that Mary is determined to escape, no matter the danger. So, in a moment of empathy, he gives Mary a hatchet and a blanket. And Pierre even manages to distract the Indian guards as Mary makes her escape, dragging poor, unwilling, frightened Mrs. Bingaman with her. Mary's plan is to follow the river south and eventually get back to the Woods River, which is now called the New River. She is desperate to get back to the New River in time to warn her neighbors of the impending Shawnee attack. Now, like most women of that era, neither Mary nor Mrs. Bingaman could swim. That means that every time they come to a tributary of the main river, they have to detour up until they reach shallow points where they're able to wade across. These constant detours made their trip about 850 miles long, and they accomplished that in 42 days. 42 days, six weeks. The question is often asked, how did they manage to get so far in such a short period of time? Well, the biggest help was the virgin forests with their dense high canopies that blotted out the sun and prevented underbrush from growing. That would have impeded their progress, you see. In 1755, there were fewer forests and more grasslands. Today, today it would be impenetrable, and we would not be able to make that long trip. But Mary and her companions trudged on and on and on. More of her journey next week. And remember, mark your calendar for her festival at the end of the month.